Good morning and welcome to our streamed service from St Peter's Church, Western Fable. Let us now begin our worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. You are my sons and daughters, this day have I begotten you. See what love the Father has given us. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. See what love the Father has given us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. The Collect for the today, the 11th Sunday after Trinity. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we running the way of your commandments may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. sinned against heaven and against you, we are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself, as those who once were dead but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now listen to our Bible reading, given by John Pazakali, the homily by Hilary Halstead, and our intercessions this morning will be led by Sarah Howard. This morning's reading is taken from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 to 27. 
Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion, only to meet a bear. As though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall, only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark, without a ray of brightness? I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and drain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and offerings 40 years in the wilderness, people of Israel? You have lifted up the shrine of your king, the pedestal of your idols, the star of your God, which you made for yourselves. Therefore I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are many challenges in our strange new normal world, but I've also discovered some real positives. One of these is our regular morning and evening prayer on Facebook Live. Every day we read a psalm, then an Old Testament lesson. We've read Deuteronomy, Numbers, Joshua, and we're now in 1 Samuel revisiting all those familiar stories. We also have a New Testament reading followed by prayer. We recently read Psalm 72, and I found myself reading the words, May his foes bow down before him, and his enemies lick the dust. Lick the dust? Either that makes total sense to you, or has left you scratching your head in puzzlement. It made me smile, as it was the phrase we used as children when someone killed you in play and you fell down dead, you licked the dust. I know, if I use this expression with my children, or other younger people, they look at me with confusion and pity, and certainly no understanding of where it came from or what it means. There are many phrases like this that started off in the King James translation of the Bible and then became part of common language. It is also a brilliant example of how language changes over time, thus making old texts much harder to interpret and communication with young people quite challenging and amusing. I was thinking about this while reading the Beatitudes. As most of you will know, the Beatitudes are the first bit of teaching Jesus gives us in his Sermon on the Mount. For today's homily, we are looking at verses 5 and 6, which tend to be read together. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Michael mentioned the word blessed as happy, finding hope and joy in life by following Jesus' teaching. So, blessed are the meek. What does Jesus mean here? Meek is definitely a word that has changed since it was used in the King James Bible. To a modern reader, this phrase can appear to be a manifesto for doormats. Blessed are the meek, for they will never cease to be stepped on. As a child, I learned the song, Gentle Jesus, Meek and Mild, which makes us think of Jesus as sickly sweet and ineffectual. But my understanding of Jesus as an adult is certainly not of such a person, and I do not think that that is what Jesus intended. The word meek evokes in my mind the image of a little mouse, terrified of the big world around. But actually, the Greek word is far better translated as gentle, 
kind or humble, which gives us a better understanding of what Jesus meant. The full beatitude is, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Inheriting the earth is another way of saying we will be making the kingdom of God on earth. So let us look in more detail at the second of these Beatitudes. I think when Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, he is saying that we should seek for what is right with as much zeal and concentration as when we are driven to look for food when we are hungry or drink when we are thirsty. We should allow ourselves to be driven with a desire that is powerful, not for our own welfare, but for the welfare of others. Of course, people who hunger and thirst for what is right cannot help but run into conflict with those whose interests are tied up with what is not right. Jesus himself is a good example of this, since his yearning for what is right led him into direct conflict with the authorities of his day. So, Jesus is saying that blessedness lies not in fighting for yourself and your own needs, but for others and what they most need. St. Paul had the same idea when he said, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Jesus is not asking us to be wishy-washy, but to be people who gently but insistently fight for justice for those around us. Often when people cite Christian meekness, they also use a phrase from slightly later in the Sermon on the Mount, verse 39. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, Turn the other also. In Jesus' time, if you hit someone on their right cheek, you had to use either the back of your hand or your left hand, and either of these was a sign of most profound disrespect. Turning the other cheek would insist on that they strike you with their right hand as an equal. What Jesus is suggesting here is that his followers should stand up to those who oppress them and others with a quiet dignity. Turning the other cheek is not a giving in to bullies, but with a spirit like that of Jesus, who faced death with gentle dignity, it is a quiet standing up to all of those who seek to oppress and insisting that we, and those for whom we seek justice, be treated with dignity and respect. Our reading today was from Amos, an Old Testament prophet who had quite a lot to say about justice. You heard in verse 24, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. God has always thought about justice and fairness among God's people and we are called to be compassionate and just in all our dealings and to care for those in need. This starts with standing up for the oppressed and for supporting those in need, whether it's through the local food bank or supporting fair trade in other countries through Tradecraft Exchange and other Christian charities. The need to do this is as great as it ever was in the challenging world we now live in. Standing up for those in need with a quiet dignity will mean that we are doing our bit in furthering the Kingdom of God. My prayer is that we will continue to do this in whatever ways we can. Amen. Let us pray through the power of the Spirit to our loving Heavenly Father. Almighty God, we give thanks for your Son, Jesus, and we pray that we may, through him, grow ever stronger in our faith in you. We give thanks for Christ's words of blessing or beatitude on all those who appear lacking in the material blessings of this world, but are all the richer in the kingdom. We pray for those who are currently seeking a way forward in their faith, for those whose hearts and minds you have touched and who are looking for ways to follow you more deeply, and for those who have doubts and fears from which they cannot currently find peace and comfort. Strengthen all Christians in their faith, that they may shine as witnesses to your name and be a sign of hope in our troubled world. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church here on earth, for all across various denominations who have the burden of leadership in these strange times, for our bishops, clergy, the ministry team, 
and all who have stepped up, up to offer witness or service to others while meeting in church is not possible. We pray that we will all be listening for what you have called us to do, in formal and informal ways. And we pray for all who will help in leading services, carrying out other activities and caring for the congregation during this time of vacancy, and for all those who are currently working on all the necessary processes required to begin recruiting for a new rector. Lord, be already preparing the minds of potential candidates that the right people will be open to hear your call so that together we can continue working to grow your kingdom in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all in any kind of need this day. The sick, disabled, lonely, depressed, homeless, redundant, and all who are finding current times a struggle. Comfort the carers, the bereaved, and all those who are waiting for treatment, results, healing, or a peaceful end, that they may know your strength and peace upholding them at all times. We may each know people in particular need, and we bring them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that you love us, care for us, and long to shower us with all good things. Help us to keep open the channels of communication. Show us what to say and how to listen. And above all, be with us in our silences, in our struggle for words and inability to hear. We know you long for all our prayers, fumbling or incoherent, spoken or silent, long known or sudden and unexpected, and always hear us, even if we sometimes fail to understand your answers or your timing. Merciful Father, accept all of our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.